Uh, the vehicle had been slightly rough. Uh, we felt some bumping and thumping, not more than we on the way up during first stage, which mm -hmm. kind of went away as we got out of the atmosphere until finally at SRB staging, things were very smooth. And I think this is a very spectacular picture coming up of the uh, staging itself. Boosters uh, do their thing and tumble away from the tank, and pretty soon you'll see uh, some, some tremendous footage of the uh, drogue chutes on the SRBs, SRBs uh, and clear-cut proof that the SRBs do, in fact, uh, land in the water and, uh, uh, and are there for us to retrieve. Absolutely spectacular shot here. Fantastic. Meanwhile, we were on the second stage, which, which the only words I can describe it were just absolutely smooth as glass. It's just unbelievable, just kind of a, a, a humming noise in the background, and that's about all you can say. It was just, just so smooth. It's interesting to note here that after Ken lost his SRBs, they diverted all the photography to the SRBs, and we're pressing on. Who knows where we are? <laughs> I would suspect that this time we're probably almost 60 miles high while these are impacting down and probably uh, 100 or so miles downrange by now. But uh, we can see here that the uh, SRBs float very nicely, and uh, my understanding is they're retrieved by the uh, retrieval force at uh, Kennedy, and we're towed in and uh, are in pretty good shape. So uh, I think this is clear-cut proof that we do, in fact, uh, get the SRBs back. We've had Miko now, and uh, after a very smooth ride, we did not feel the tank come off to any extent at all. Uh, Vance puts in a 11-second plus X burn, which captured these pictures for us as these are being taken from the belly camera. We can see the extent of the tank, and as we slide up past it during our four, plus X burn, uh, you can just see the whole picture uh, working. Opening of the cargo bay doors. Open the uh, starboard side first as normal and then uh, went right into the uh, opening of the port side door. Uh, our our Pac-Man are in there with the satellites all there. Very shortly after we got the doors open, the uh, uh, next job was for Bill to go ahead and get the uh, sun shields closed so we could protect our precious cargo uh, for that uh, throughout that first day in orbit until we got into the deploy and uh, launch uh, deployment sequence. And the closing of the last sun shield here, as Bob said, immediately post insertion. This is the view that we were looking at out the window, and you could tell we weren't very interested in what we were seeing. <laughs> <laughs> the uh, quilted pattern on the uh, sun shield is really not that quilted, it's just that with the stark relief of the uh, bright sun on the side, throwing the shadow. Watch the spin start. And this, we think, is what you on the ground saw because this was uh, being sent back by television. And uh, the same view, but from the other window during the deploy. And that is exactly how it looked. The only difference in real life, there was a large and loud bang just as it let loose, which uh, got our attention, believe me. And it was the sound of the pyros firing to release the hold down clamps. That's quite a sight watching that go away from you. We never tired of seeing this site. We had some very good earth viewing attitudes, uh, and uh, this site was just a common one. This is the famous Vance Brand slow roll in space. It doesn't show up too well, but Florida and the Cape are down here in the background. We are rolling the vehicle as part of a, one of the DTOs associated with the antenna testing. <coughs> And uh, watch the sun come across the, the aft part of Columbia. The, the crew, it felt a little bit like rolling an airliner over Florida. <laughs> so one of the neat things is in the sunlight, when it came off the orbiter white, boy, that was white, white. And when you looked out into the nothing, into the sky, that was the blackest black you ever want to see. And in the daylight, of course, we couldn't see any stars behind that black. So we, we had a black sky instead of a blue one. This is Telesat as seen from the aft bulkhead TV cameras. And then from the forward bulkhead TV camera, you can see the, uh, I guess this is the movie actually. Uh, you can see Telesat emerging from behind the satellite business system sunshield here and looking very much like SBS had the day before. Using the uh, tail as a reference, it noted how, how it tracked right up that uh, tail just without a hitch. It was just absolutely smooth. We could then watch the satellites for many, many minutes after deployment. 
And just a general sense of uh, what zero-G is like. Don't get the idea that this was how we were trying to get organized. <laughs> <laughs> this was after we were organized. <laughs> This was on the morning of day five. Here's and Bill in the airlock. Uh, that's that's me. The, the the extensive thing here. That's our winter spacesuit, and the lightweight one here is the summer weight spacesuit. <laughs> <laughs> no, seriously, I was in there uh, at that point, having checked out Joe's fan, and we had the liquid cooled garment hanging underneath because we needed it connected. And I've finished that, and at this point, what I'm doing is evaluating. Uh, one or two of the things that we had hoped to look at in more depth outside, in particular the use of that hook that I'm leaning forward here to connect to a handrail as a uh, secondary restraint, and it comes out of the mini workstation that you can see right up in here on me, and in a minute I'll go and I'll lock a lever here that'll let the uh, tether no longer come out, and then I'll push and force against that. It may have looked as if he was upside down in this picture, and it just we just had the camera upside down. That's all, actually. Actually, it's sideways. Yeah, well, that's right, sideways. There yeah. <laughs> actually, obviously, in zero-G, upside down is all relative. Uh, if other people look upside down to you, then they're the ones that are upside down. There's Here our, we're getting ready for the deorbit. We've opened the uh, sun shields on both of the, uh, the PAMs, and we're closing the cargo bay doors. And as we expected, uh, because we had kept the Columbia in a relatively benign thermal attitude throughout the last couple of days, we had absolutely no problems with the doors closing, uh, and uh, they just they just worked slick as a whistle. We were just real pleased with it. And we see the pack men again. Right. Uh, the uh, just as a reminder, the radiators are extremely shiny, and that's what the reflection on the radiators. The radiators cover the inside of the door, and they are very shiny, and they're reflecting all the inside of the payload bay. At this point, we were uh, getting ready to come home. Uh, I don't think we were all that anxious to come home. We were enjoying it up there. But, uh, we we're going to be running out of uh, all the things you need to uh, sustain operations up there in a day or two. It is not true that I ate all the food, so we had to come home because of lack of food. That's not a true statement. <laughs> Doors are really impressive uh, when they come shut. Just uh, very neatly tailored the way they come together and latch. Payload bay went dark, uh, of course, with the doors closed, and here we are in the front cabin. Watch uh, the windows here. And over here, absolutely spectacular footage. We've never been never been caught before. Uh, but might explain that uh, the light up above is uh, switches and lights on switches down below the bright areas around our instrument panel. But now you see the sky starting to turn rust color as a vehicle heats up. And it's like being inside a neon sign a little bit. Uh, it it gets brighter and brighter and then stays for uh, a good part of the reentry. We reentered during the night time. And so we could see this rose-colored glow for a long period of time. Came out below. Of course, we were landing around sunrise. So you can see the reflection of the sun off the, the ship. Makes a, a very nice picture. We were down below 10,000 feet at this point on our 19-degree glide slope coming for pre-flare. Uh, the pre-flare maneuver is just a pull-out at 2,000 feet, which uh, occurs over the... Edwards uh, dry lake bed that you see in the lower part of the picture here. And uh, we were sh shooting to land on a concrete runway, which will come into view a little later. And here we are pulling out, and the gear is down. Uh, it came down at around 400 feet. Uh, Bob put it down. Joe checked that it was down. <laughs> <laughs> and then Bob checked, checked that it was down. <laughs> and we rechecked it. And then Vance checked that it was down. <laughs> and here we are, touch, coming to touchdown. <laughs>